Good morning slash afternoon. I'm Ash Tulip back with Louis Theroux. It's been it's been nearly a year since we had a last a last chat. So what I've done is I've brought him to a, an abandoned warehouse so we can effectively lock him up, and then I think as you said earlier, shoot you in the back of the head and bury you. So he's looking such a scourge to all of my. That was a joke. I didn't realise that was the actual <laughs> plan. No, 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 no. I promise you're in a very very safe space, despite the fact that it looks like it's about to fall down upon us. Um, and we're here because unlike Tribeca Film Festival, your film is now out. It's out in cinemas. It's in cinemas as of today. Not that many cinemas, but it's on download. Uh, so Americans who are watching can download it on all the usual platforms, iTunes, stuff like that. And how has the response been in kind of the rest of the world to the film coming out? Amazing. Yeah? Especially given it was a kind of a slog getting it picked up for distribution. I think some people felt... Uh, that I, as a TV property, it's a bit of a weird expression, as a TV presenter, uh, that, that maybe people didn't, wouldn't pay and go and see me at the cinema. So that, I think that was obstacle one. Obstacle two was that Alex Gibney had made a film called Going Clear that was big in the US especially on HBO. And so maybe it was felt there was not much more to be gleaned on the subject. But we overcame that. We and in, in Britain, we became, I think, the biggest grossing documentary of the year. And uh, they came out in their droves to see it. And we got a really good reaction. Just a minor accolade there. Biggest yeah. grossing documentary Yeah, that's of the amazing. Year. Minor accolade. Yeah, they just so about that. casual about that. More like. than a million pounds. Although at one million pounds, is, since Austin Powers, that always sounds like it's actually quite a small amount. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's, it's for documentaries, that's, that's still big. And... Um, uh, won the MTV, no, we won the NME uh, Film of the Year Award. So now we're in America and we hope to do good business, get the people to watch the film, of which I'm very proud. Now, my obvious question is going to be, now that you're back in America, have you noticed any bizarre sort of cars following you around, any weird people knocking on doors saying you can't film me unexpectedly? You know, what my, when I do these interviews, my first thought is always, or not first, but one of my thoughts is always like, do we really know these people are from <laughs> the Daily Mail? Uh, how do we know they're not actually Scientologists in disguise? So far, um, so good. I think, um, I think if, we, uh, if they give me hassle, it will, be, it will be in the next couple of weeks, depending partly on the success of the film. So go see the film if you want to see me uh, tailed and harassed, as, in fact, they do on, on, in, in the film, uh, if you've seen it. And then there's also the fact that while we were making our film, they revealed they were making a film about me. Um, so if you want to see that, that's also a reason to see the film. You see, I desperately want to bring this up, because when we, when we talked last year and I posted it, someone's come up with a genius idea. I think one of the top-rated comments was, uh, their documentary should be called... Um, Louis Theroux, The Looking Glass, which I quite like. You know? Yeah, when you've, when you've got a name, you basically heard every version of the joke around that name. So <laughs> alas, that one is a bit of an old chestnut. But if, you th if it works for I you... I mean, that was, that was the audience favourite. The Scientology film should be Theroux, The Looking Glass. I thought they were going to say My Louis Theroux Movie. I like the idea of it kind of mirroring my title. But, uh, or, um, or, yeah, I mean, maybe answers on a postcard. Let's come up with some... I think we could do better than that. Let's has keep it, has thinking. It, have you actually had any glimpse of it? Has the it Rue, come the, out keyhole. the Rue, the keyhole. The Rue, the keyhole. Has it come out? Have you seen any of it? Has, has Copyright it? David Frost. <laughs> have I seen their film? No, they haven't released it. Um, I think David Miscavige, the head of Scientology, is still putting the final touches on the film. Maybe he's... Um, just tweaking some of the sound effects. I've no idea if it will ever see the light of day. I've started to wonder whether um, actually David Miscavige has a soft spot for me and has decided either that he, like, he quite likes the Scientology movie I've made or maybe like he's a fan of, of Weird Weekends. I don't know why that's in my head. That he saw, I, I think Louis should go back to doing the stuff about uh, the swingers. I like the one about the swingers. That was a funny one. Uh, the Scientology one wasn't so good. Uh, I think sometimes about, this is a little esoteric, but Joseph Stalin used to, as is well known, persecuted many people, dissidents, and imprisoned them, jailed them, starved them to death. But I read a book about Ossip Mandelstam, the poet, and he got sort of special treatment because Stalin himself fancied that he was a bit of a poet and had written poems in his youth. And so he sort of gave Ossip, Ossip Mandelstam a slightly, like, 
he, 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 he exiled him, but he didn't kill him. And so I wonder if I fall into that category for David Miscavige. I am not alleging that David Miscavige has killed anyone. No, I appreciate that. For all, for all intents and purposes, <laughs> we don't want a lawsuit here. None of us can afford Well, you can because you've just earned a million pounds. But the rest of us, we're still broke journalists. We, we've yet to get that far. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask about um, your career as a whole, just for a very quick detour. Um, one of the questions that I was asked after I had a chat with you is, is do you ever regret anything? Do you ever feel like you've, you've made a, a misstep or do you regret something that you've done or, or in your earlier career? Uh, um, let me think. I think, you know, w w one of the things that I am uh, burdened with, or maybe it's good, is a sort of sense of perfectionism and a sort of sense of revisiting and worrying away at work that I do. In the edit, I obsessively sort of uh, restructure and redo bits of voiceover. I, I sort of try and polish and it's a, it's a, it's a painstaking process to sort of make the shows, uh, um, although they look sort of spontaneous and, and, the, and the actuality is spontaneous, but to, to create the story and to create the sense of um, narrative build is a lot of work. And by the same token, I look back at shows that I did in the past and I, I, I spot little imperfections. Funnily enough, it's more often either moments of ever so slight, maybe not so slight, cruelty, bits where I was sort of um, slightly inconsiderate of maybe people's feelings or where I phrased bits of commentary in a way that actually um, seemed slightly like it might be a cheap shot. I mean, George Lucas famously went back and, and sort of recut, or at least he kind of, he, he, he sort of um, buffed up the digital effects on Star Wars, didn't he, in, in Empire Strikes Back? And everyone felt like, oh, no, you've actually made it worse. So I'm trying not to um, go down the road of getting back into the edit and redoing anything. You don't want your own hand shot first moment. That's not, that's not on the list of accolades of Louis no. Um In terms of the Scientology film, do you think that now under the current um, political climate that the world's in, do you think that it's going to thrive or do you think it's going to decline? I think Scientology is one of those things. You know, someone asked me a similar question to do with the Westboro Baptist Church, this, um, you know, the extreme sort of hate group church that's um, in Kansas. I made two documentaries about them, and they said, go back for a third. In this climate, it could all be really different. And I thought, well, you know, Westboro, they are so out there that for them, whether it's Trump, Nigel Farage, you know, Marine Le Pen, these are all just the same you know, as Barack Obama or George Bush, they don't uh, either like or loathe those political figures anymore. They are so outside the mainstream that the, the, those sorts of uh, the, the changes that to us are cataclysmic or, or at least very, very major, to them are irrelevant. And I think for Scientology, it's actually sort of the same. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a Scientology watcher called uh, Tony Ortega who, who does one of the main anti-Scientology blogs. And he, during the campaign, was saying that he viewed Hillary Clinton as the more pro-Scientology candidate because of Bill Clinton having a history with um, helping out Tom Cruise, um, I think back in the 90s. And, and I think Tom Cruise got an audience with Bill Clinton and... Bill Clinton agreed to maybe talk to uh, the Chancellor of Germany or somebody or other to try and ease Scientology's uh, problems a little bit. Did you, when you were Unless making Nigel Farage becomes a Scientologist, then everything changes. Oh, really? Farage then they would me. get a foothold in, uh, in the corridors of power. Farage, Scientology and me. That wouldn't that be a vote-getter? I, I look forward to that, that documentary coming out. Um, when you were making the film... Did, was there anything you, you either cut out of the final, um, the final result, final edit even, I should say, or was there anything that you, you desperately wanted to have in the film that you just couldn't get the footage of? I would have liked, uh, you know, better quality versions of some of the Scientology videos because a lot of them are not easily available to the public. They're, they're, they've been leaked or released, and you, they only exist by... Um, 
sort of underground methods. And um, there's, a, there's a famous Scientology orientation video, and we used a tiny bit of it, but I think it was filmed by someone years ago on a little phone. And uh, it's the one where a guy called Larry Anderson says uh, to the, the person who's just had a tour of the Celebrity Center or a Scientology building, and, th and they're told, watch this film, and then you can, you know, go home. So at the end of the video, he goes, after learning all these things, you could walk away from here and have nothing more to do with Scientology, just as you could throw yourself off a bridge or blow your brains out. It would be your right. It would be stupid, but you're right. And um, I, always, I always love that kind of, you know, boil it down to what it is. Leaving the building, not doing it anymore, you all, you, same as blowing out your brains. And we have, I would love to have got a better version of that. I, lo I would love to have got some more of um, the internal materials as well. As far as scenes go, there were a couple of things, but no, nothing sort of firecracker. Just some moments of, of, sort of revelations about the central character, Marty Rathbun, showing him as a more complicated, explaining some of the sources of, his, um, of the trauma in his life. Now, I'm glad you, you mentioned Marty, because at the end of the film, he gives sort of a very, uh, almost like a prophecy of doom mm -hmm. about what's going to happen. Um, have, have you spoken to him since in the years that's gone by? Has he, has he fulfilled that? He you says they will is? rue the day. They will rue the day. Because all through the film we should explain that um, Marty has been... Well, we've been followed by private investigators. People have popped up filming us. And Marty, as, as in fact the ex-Scientologists are wont to, that he has got the worst... Of the uh, of the sort of the attention they abuse him in a way they don't really abuse me too much they're a little bit rude and shouty but with Marty they actually active Scientologists hurl abuse that seems to be uh, engineered to inflict maximum emotional damage and then you see him kind of going off the deep end in a climactic scene in the film since then um, no I think he had they're not ruining the day no, not yet. Anyway, I think um, he doesn't, uh, you know, I should mention, like, he, he liked the film when we first showed it to him. Then a week or two went by, and then he, he decided he didn't like the film. And, and, and he's since sort of denounced the film. And I see it as part of a bigger picture of what Marty's going through, which he's announced that he, uh, he sort of sees anti-Scientology as as cult-like as Scientology at this point. And he's also denounced other projects that he sees as anti-Scientology, including a book written by Ron Miscavige, the father of David Miscavige. So, you know, there's been developments. He's still kind of evolving on his own spiritual path. And what happens now uh, in terms of your projects? Where are you at with, with everything else that you're working on? Where, what's next for Louis I don't Theroux? know. You know, I've got three, um, I've got three TV docs, but that's, those will come out in the UK later in the year. And, and what are they? Just those are about um, crime in America, basically. One is about murder in Milwaukee. One is about sex trafficking in Houston. And then the third one is about addiction to heroin and opioids. So there's those. And that's mainly what I'm engaged in. Now that the film's made, as you kindly pointed out after I'd pointed it out, made a million pounds in the UK or more. Although not for me. You, you thought that all went into my pocket. No. Uh, you did. No, no, that doesn't. I don't know <sighs> I who's... Was waiting, I was waiting for Air I don't know Force where Louis. the money is. Um, but uh, the important thing is the backers made some money, I guess, because they, they said I, I can do another one. And so uh, that's nice. So 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 I have to figure out what my next film is. Do you think it will be back in America? Because you mentioned your your upcoming uh, BBC docs are all based in America, by the sounds of it. Do you prefer America to England in terms of a a, a goldmine for stories? I think I well I prefer maybe puts it too boldly. I love working in the UK, and I feel as though a different thing happens when you do a British story because there's a sort of. Um, an immediacy and a sense of recognition that British people, uh, when, when you see British people as a British person, you sort of, there's a, a sort of uh, an understanding and a, maybe a sense of a different, a different sort of empathy. Having said that, there's more extremes, either there's more extremes here or the extremes here in America, or the extremes are easier to get to. I certainly find it easier to do stories in the US. 
I think also there's so many crew, a lot of different crews are co are competing for the same stories in the UK. So it's a little bit of a, uh, I've tried not to use the word clusterfuck. If you use clusterfuck, I'm fine <laughs> with clusterfuck. Um, I just did an interview with um, Jenny McCarthy. She was interviewing me for her radio show. I don't know if you know her. She's an actor, comedian, comic performer, and she was in a long-term relationship with Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey, I think, was on the fringes of Scientology. At least he was definitely friends with Tom Cruise. And Jenny McCarthy was describing what it was like being at the wedding of um, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes and meeting David Miscavige and inadvertently insulting him. Um, amazing. It was amazing. That's actually amazing. But yeah. she, she's, still, she's still kicking around. Mm -hmm. So you have a second film, uh, potentially in the, in the plan, in the pipeline, as it were. Any, any hints on what that's going to be? Any I was hoping you might give me some ideas. Well, what would you like to do? What would, what would be your ideal well, film? I do things on things that are either extreme or weird or that involve ex emotional angst. What about inside the Daily Mail? Well, that's on camera now. I'm going to have to hold you to that. I'm going to edit all of this out. The last five <laughs> minutes, all of this stuff, and I'm going to get fired. It's gone. It's gone. The, the joy of editing. Um, I, well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you again. Likewise. As always, thank you so much for giving me your time. Pleasure. Thank you for having me back. You're very welcome. Let's do it again in a year. Yeah, we'll we make, make it, it like an annual thing. I was going to say. I'll bring a cupcake with a candle in it. It'll be great. And now I go and get shot in the corner of the room. <laughs>